Good day everyone, Complaining Gamer here. If you request it, then I'll happily test it. We're going to kick this one off with Uncharted Drake's Fortune, as requested by Akshay Ganesh in my previous video. Our PCS3 settings are on screen, and this time I'm trying a baseline configuration suggested by Illinear, who is a long-term game tester in the community and conveniently has the same processor as I do, the Ryzen 7 2700X. We'll also be taking a look at performance on Uncharted for both Linux and Windows. As always, full system specs are in the description and all motherboard settings are default and auto. No overclock or manual boosts. Under these conditions, the CPU typically sits at an all-core 4 GHz on both OS's. Jumping right into my conclusion, then working backwards. I found performance on both operating systems good enough to qualify as playable, depending on your definition of playable. You can expect to experience FPS swings ranging from lows of 15 to moments of quite stable 30, the target frame rate, with a general fluctuation of 20 to 30. Your mileage will vary depending on the strength of your system. Across both Windows and Linux, I was able to play without any game-breaking limitation that I could find, but that does not mean Uncharted is bug-free. The major bug the game suffers from is described as a trap error, in-game death traps that lead to unpredictable freezing. RPCS3 will crash and require reloading. Upon re-entering the game, however, you'll be able to continue progressing through the level, so whilst annoying, it didn't cause a long-term delay or happen often enough to break immersion. Linux will also crash, but interestingly, a lot less so than Windows. For now, there is a manual fix unique to each system to stop this from happening, involving address patching, which you'll find in the description. When they happen is somewhat random and inconsistent, Personally, I didn't apply any patches and just played as is. There are three lesser bugs, but far more humorous. Grenades. I think they're on LSD. At least their rainbow trail would suggest that. When you attempt to throw them, they will freeze in the air the moment they leave your hand and just hover there to detonate at an undetermined time. This does not apply to the grenade launcher, however. The second bug, which has no real impact, is wavy foliage, where plants will act as if they're on a wavy sea. This final bug is possibly the greatest thing I've ever seen. Depending on how warped your upbringing has been, this will either terrify you or make you burst out with laughter. I'm going to name this one the zombie worm. Upon death, enemy AI will discover that they've been reincarnated as harmless worms left free to roam the world. It is absolutely insane to just watch them go on their mini adventures to nowhere and is arguably the best death animation that has ever been. With that said, both grenades and zombie worm can be fixed by selecting accurate X-Float in CPU additional settings, but with an extreme hit to performance. A lesser issue, which is easily fixed, involves Chapter 4 onwards, which will be a blur if you don't have right colour buffers enabled. As you can see, graphically the game is being emulated excellently, accompanied by extremely rich audio, which unfortunately I have to mute due to copyrighted music. The most obvious graphical glitch you may come across is Z-Fighting, particularly noticeable in the U-boat. Z-fighting, also called stitching, is a phenomenon in 3D rendering that occurs when two or more primitives have similar or identical values in the Z-buffer, 
where two faces occupy essentially the same space with neither in front. It happens because the PC GPU and the PS3 GPU have very tiny differences in accuracy, so this behaviour is somewhat expected. Even so, the world is beautifully vibrant and true to the original. The GPU used here is the 1050 Ti. If you've noticed any visual specifics which I haven't that are missing, leave a comment. Starting with parkour, a huge part of the Uncharted experience. It flows well and feels controllable. It never gets away from you. It's quick and smooth and performs how you'd expect. Controls are accurate and responsive. Combat works well with guns and punches achieving their goal of disabling the enemy minus the grenade glitch. My one recommendation here is to lower analog dead zones in pad options because personally I found aiming on default a little awkward to control and lacking the sensitivity I desired. World physics and effects from water to explosions to environmental objects seemed to behave as intended and help the player where necessary. Six axis gyro based events such as crossing logs didn't cause any issue even though I use a wired Xbox One controller which has no gyro. Progression was still possible. Menus saving and loading work flawlessly. Object interaction was spot on from gates to mounted guns to collectibles. The common consensus is that Linux performs significantly better than Windows in Uncharted, especially for Ryzen, but my personal experience at an all core 4 GHz was that the gap between the two operating systems was minor at best and completely within the margin of error. I found them both to dip and peak in performance with near equality. Naturally your experience may differ. Keep in mind that my CPU leans on the side of AMD and Linux tends to deal with an 8 core 16 thread processor like the 2700X better than Windows. If you are impressed with how the 2700X is performing here, then imagine the potential of Zen 2 and the Ryzen 3000 lineup, which outperform my CPU across the board. Regardless of operating system, you can expect a playable experience on Uncharted Drake's Fortune in RPCS3 as it stands today, depending on your personal demands. With VBlank set to 120, allowing us to take the game above 30 FPS, those of you with very powerful systems can enjoy higher frame rate gameplay, with the only issue being cinematic cutscenes which will run too quickly. It's important to remember that performance and bugs here today are simply a snapshot in time, August 2019. In terms of settings, I urge experimentation to see what works best on your hardware and make sure to always use the latest build of RPCS3. As the emulator develops and improvements implemented over time, also considering the dedication and progress the team has already demonstrated, then you can almost guarantee performance will get better and bugs lessened, getting us closer to a flawless experience. If you'd like to see a specific title tested on any emulator, make sure to leave a comment down below. Given that Linux has no easy to use performance analysis for gaming, the built-in overlay of RPCS3 is incredibly useful, but if that didn't exist, we wouldn't be completely without some options. Frame analysis can be done using uncompressed video files presented in a style many of you will be familiar with, including tears and frame time. If this style of presentation interests you, then let me know. So there you have it, Uncharted Drake's Fortune in RPCS3. It can be completed from start to finish with some minor annoyances and moments of both great and poor performance as of August 2019. Let's wait and see what the future brings. In my opinion, looking very good. Leave your ideas, thoughts and comments down below. If you want to see videos similar to this, leave a like so I know and of course subscribe if you'd like to support what I'm doing here. I'll catch you in the next one.